All right. Our conversation today is going to be for all of the moms and hey, maybe a dad (laughs) for the wife that's going to listen to this and like be like, sir, you need to listen to this episode. But I am excited to be here with Alexia Carrillo. Thank you for being with me today, Alexia. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. So we are going to talk about motherhood and um, we are going to talk about staying home, about working and all the things, mom, all the, this big decision about stay at home, work at home, go to work moms. It's a big decision that a lot of us have had to, are either currently navigating or have had to navigate. So uh, before we get into it, Alexia, can you tell us about yourself? Yeah. So um, I guess I'm Alexia Carrillo. Mm-hmm. I am a host of a podcast called Mom with a Calling. And um, kind of backing up a little bit, I grew up in uh, East Tennessee in the Appalachian Mountains where um, it's like the Bible Belt over there. And um, basically I ended up progressing through life uh, doing the whole career thing, right? Like I went to college and then I was like, I'm getting out of these you know, backwards mountains kind of a thing and ended up going to grad school and getting my PhD in cancer biology. Thought I was going to be a career woman. Like I had no plans at all of ever. I didn't understand being a stay at home mom. I didn't understand being an entrepreneur, like none of that. And um, as I went into grad school, I hated it. And it was probably like the worst time of my life. Um, But I was too stubborn to quit. So I continued and really just didn't know what I wanted to do. I've always been a kind of person who really valued knowing where I was going. Like I needed to have Uh. a plan or what what I wanted to do. I've always been really interested in figuring out what I was meant to do. Like I just knew we were meant to do something. And so um, when I didn't know, I would just kind of panic. So in the middle of grad school, I was like, I don't want to do this whole PI thing, which is where you have your own lab. And I was like, but what do I want to do? Well, as I researched that more, there's lots of things you can do with the PhD. So I just stuck it out. Um, And then I ended up uh, after grad school, just kind of feeling like I didn't know what I was doing. So I did a postdoc, which was, which is like another year of doing research just to see if maybe it was just the grad school vibe, you know? And in that year though, I was like, this whole lab thing is not, not for me. So I started like branching out a little bit into I have no idea how this, oh, I know when I was getting married a few years before, um, I had looked on Etsy a lot and saw that people like sold stuff because I was buying things for the wedding (laughs) on Etsy. And I was like, people are doing like, what is this? And so suddenly I found myself in this, um, thought about like people creating things and entrepreneurship and making money online somehow. And my mom was really big into like the internet before, like when the big internet became around kind of a thing. Okay. She's always, she was always like that. And so I found myself sort of exploring what else could I do? Mm. And I kind of dabbled in Etsy. I was awful at that, but I tried, you know, so that kind of got those wheels turning and like the idea of creativity and is there some problem to solve? Like this whole thought of business had never cross my mind. Mm. And I was like, I never thought about, you know, somebody had a design, I don't know, this pen, like they had to figure out what was going to go where, what color it was going to be. And I was like, it like was this big problem. And so then, um, we got pregnant with our son and then I was like, okay, I'm out of this whole lab life. Like this is 80 hours a week or whatever. Like this is insane. So I ended up coming back to Nashville and working as like a teacher, Um, but it's kind of like an advanced STEM program where I was the scientist in the classroom working alongside the teacher and I would teach and all that kind of stuff. And I loved it. But when I had my son that shifted everything, I was like those feelings of wanting to do something different or do something on my own shifted to, I don't like leaving my son. Like it just hit me that I wanted to be home with him. And I was like, I never Mm. thought that I would ever want this. And I just couldn't like, you know, little eight week old baby having to put him in the care of somebody else. And I just set out on this mission to be like, I need to find a way to where I can be home with him because this is feels like crazy. But I wrestled for three years with I like the feelings of it needed to make enough money. It needed to be worthy. Cause I mean, I had a PhD, like I was doing this honorable job of teaching and I could create, you know, do cures for diseases and all this kind of stuff. And it's like the thing I came up with, 
um, to be able to leave my job was to sell things on eBay, which I was like, okay, I'm going to go sell people's used stuff on eBay, or I'm going to like, it just felt like it, it was so bizarre, but finally I did, um, quit my job and came home kind of out of a leap, like a step of, I say faith, but at the time it wasn't faith in God. It was just faith in, I hope this is going to work. People say Mm -hmm. it works. I've seen people do it. Hopefully I can do it with all the time, you know, that I'm going to have, um, but that would start a whole new journey that was not as easy as I'd envisioned. So, yeah. And that is a big step, uh, you know, to, to come home. I, I know that I've gone through that same kind of discussion with my husband and friends and I was the same as you. In fact, when we were dating, my husband said, well, one day you will stay home with the kids and I will work. And I told him, then you're dating the wrong person. And he was like, well, I mean, like if you, if you wanted to, like, if that's what you wanted to do, you know? And I was like, oh, or he, you know, so we got over that, but now here I am and I work from home. And I, I know for me, it was just something that I never thought. So when you made the decision to come like to, to stay home, did you have like a list of expectations or were you really just like kind of stepping into it and you're like, whatever happens, happens? Oh, no. <laughs> I am a planner <laughs> kind of a person. I want, I'm very risk averse, which is kind of funny trying to do business, but I am always planning like super far ahead, like in eighth grade kind of a thing. I'm like researching all the careers so I can pick out the right high wow. school classes to make sure I get the right college to make sure I don't miss the, the degree, the good degree I wanted, which is um, why you made it all the way to a PhD. <laughs> well, I just, I was very much like, I did cause my, just, I guess personally, like my mom always took random classes in college and she never okay. got anywhere or finished. Uh-huh. And so from a young age, I was like, she doesn't have a plan. Like, why doesn't she look at the classes that she needs to have <laughs> so she can finish the thing. And so for me, it was like, I'm not doing whatever that is. I'm going to actually like go the, the way I'm supposed to go. I'm not taking random nonsense classes. Um, so when I wanted, when I quit, that's part of the reason that I was kind of stalled it out is I was like, what's the plan? What's the income plan? What's the, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't visualize what it was going to be. So once I kind of got a handle on my business to be able to have enough to where I felt confident money wise. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had savings and stuff. Then I was like the plan of being at home in my mind was so idyllic. Like I had researched it on Pinterest, I guess, and seen it. I I mean, I literally, Oh, that's really going to give you the idyllic picture. I I, I literally thought that because my son was like two and a half ish. I literally thought that I was going to come home. I was going to somehow work like eight hours a day, do this business, like make all this money to be so successful. And then I was going to also spend all this time with him. And just in my mind, I had been so stuck in the career for so long because grad school was six years. So, I mean, it was 2008. So from 2008 to 2018, so 10 years, I was like wow. stuck in working and doing, you know, and it, grad school was like, 80 hours a week. It was crazy schedule. So it was little things like, I'm going to be able to go to the park if I want, when I want, I'm going to be able to go to people's birthday parties when I want, I'm going to be able to travel and not have to like, I can do whatever I want. I'm not trapped. That was a huge thing for me. I felt like I was in prison when I was in work. And that's actually one of the things that kind of came through in the mom with a calling podcast is this story of the, of the, um, Hebrews leaving Egypt, right? They're like in prison. That's like your job. And it's like, that is a huge one for me is I felt like I was trapped and it was simple as like, I can't go outside and I grew Mm -hmm. up in the mountains. And so to me, I'm like, I want to just go on a walk. And so in my mind, I was somehow going to do it all. You know, all the things that you never get done, all the cleaning you've meant to do, don't have time for. I was going to start exercising because I suddenly I was going to have all this time. But the biggest one was that my son and I like that it was going to be this amazing like harmonious thing um but I didn't but when what happened is that when I got home I had didn't have a clue how to be a mom because I didn't spend any time with them I didn't see him I was always at work and so suddenly I was faced with this reality of I don't know what he wants for snack I don't know how to get him to nap I don't know anything about potty training I don't know I knew nothing and I had no clue how to get him to sit still looking back, it's kind of crazy, but literally I was like, why is he not playing with the Play-Doh so I can work quietly? What is happening? Like, what am I doing wrong? And I was getting so frustrated with him. And it was the craziest 
craziest time, but it went nothing mm-hmm. as plain, like in my mind, whatever I thought was going to happen was not what happened. Man. Did, did you have to go through like, I, I don't know, like a self check of self doubt or, you know, did I make the right decision or am I a good mom? It, like, what were the thoughts that I mean, we all have them. (laughs) So what were the thoughts that were threatening to kind of like discourage you in that time? And how did you fight against those? All of those plus, Uh um, like, I mean, because it was, it was a, it was such an onslaught, honestly, of thoughts Mm. that at the time, like I mentioned, I had basically, I mean, I've been a Christian since I was a little girl, but during grad school and on, it was probably those 10 years that I hadn't step foot in church, hadn't opened a Bible, nothing. I mean, I just, God was not in my thoughts as far as I knew, you know? Um, and I just remember feeling just this onslaught of discouragement and just worry and fear. And I was stressed out to the max mom guilt was crazy mm. because I thought that I was, because if I was coming home, I needed to keep him home, but I'd always put him in daycare and I didn't know, I have, I have no other kids. So I didn't know how to manage that. And I felt like, I was a terrible mom for putting, for wanting to put him in daycare. But then Mm -hmm. on the other level, I was like, I'm a terrible mom because clearly he's not this angelic, whatever. Now it turns out he has ADHD. So it was a whole different thing that we just didn't know was brewing there. I always said something was quite different, but, um, so anyway, I just remember crying over the thought of putting him in daycare because I thought that that meant I somehow wasn't good enough, or I was, I don't even know like that when I came home, I should be grateful for being here with him. So I should want to be with him all the time that I had this, again, this, everybody else is at home with their eight kids or whatever. And they're like loving it and being with their kids is the most joy they've ever had. And for me, the business, yes, I wanted to be with him, but the business part of it was also a big driver for me personally. And looking back, that was because I put my identity in my work. But so because of that, though, I was struggling hard. I'd always made more money, if not equal to the amount of money my husband made. And suddenly I was, I had to just depend on him. But at first I didn't like it. I felt like I couldn't let that happen. So I was trying to match my previous salary with what I was making then. And just, it was, it was so hard, um, that front of things, but then also just in business by itself, just the, I remember that first month, you know, I got it for, for 10 years, I had gotten, um, an automatic just bank deposit. There it is. Yeah. And all of a sudden I was like, it is not coming. There is nothing's happening unless I make it happen. Um, and then around the same time, kind of to make matters even crazier, my mom was, uh, passing away from cancer in those, mm-hmm. like from May is when I quit my the beginning of June is when I came home, came home and she passed away in August. And so I basically used up the savings to go and visit her over and over and to help with things. So suddenly I was like, just the, the money stuff of it was just so stressful. So I had so many doubts and so many worries and I was constantly crying. And that's how I kind of ended up in the online space, looking for the mindset solutions. Cause I just knew, like I was hearing about mindset and I was like, what is this mindset? You know? And as I was listening, I was like, everybody else is so confident. They seem to know what they're doing. They seem to just have this security that I clearly do not have. Like imposter syndrome was huge, like all of it. Yeah. And so that took me on this journey um, down that trail that honestly hasn't stopped. Yeah. And we're going to, we're actually going to get to that mindset kind of venture that you took into uh, or that that you went into for a little while, but you, you are so driven and like, there are a lot of women out there that did exactly what you've done. They went, they got the degree, they got the promotion after promotion after promotion. They got to the job that they wanted to be at. They got to the point where they're making a salary equal to their husbands or, uh, you know, maybe even above. They might even be the, uh, the breadwinner in the family, if that's the case. Uh, what sometimes that, that we find our, I think guys, they they talk about how guys find their identity in their work. And there are some of us who do the same as women, you know, and we're, and we're like supposed to find our identity in God. We understand that. Um, 
in like our brain, <laughs> right? But it hasn't quite like seeped down into our heart and our, our mind. How did you deal with that contrast? You have accomplished so much. And how does it not just feel like a complete abandonment, a complete waste of all those years of hard work to number one, mm-hmm. step away from that, uh, you know, that work that you've done, that job, that position, a career. And then how does, how do we take our heart and then transition it from career first to family first? Or probably, mm-hmm. like, I guess I should say, career first to God first. And yeah. then if we're following, you know, if we're if God is our focus and where we find our value, then he will help, you know, bring our family up over our career. But how, how do we do that? Because that's really difficult for some women. Yeah. So I think at the time um, I had done that without knowing that I shouldn't do that. Um, and so I think that was part of the journey and part of the humbling process that God took me on this journey because I had to undo that, those thoughts of putting my career above everything, putting my identity in my career. And so I would say, like you said, it's just looking back at it now. I mean, I've spent years like trying to fix that, which was Mm. really, I mean, that's when I started going to the Bible and I started saying like, what does God say about me? And the more I studied and the more I prayed and the more I like poured my heart out to God, like help me understand what is going on with all these thoughts. Um, that's when I realized like my identity is in him and just mm-hmm. starting to lean on that and to be honest with myself and with God. So allowing him to work through me. So I would say that if someone is doing that or has done that, to really be honest about what it even, what it really means, because when we put our identity in our career. We're also putting our, what we're really doing is putting ourselves, putting our identity in and relying on money. We're putting our value in the money that we can bring mm-hmm. and the power or like influence we can have. And while God can bring us money and he can bring us influence, um, it's very prideful, I guess we're thinking about ourselves and like this amazing thing we can do in the world when we put those two wrapped together. And that was really hard for me to undo as well, to realize I was like, I'm not Mm. prideful. I want to help people. That's what I love. You know, it's helping people. Um, but really it was kind of all about me and my, you know, success. And we all have our own personal baggage and reasons why we probably do do that because getting to a place where you are okay with saying, well, this is what God's called me to do. And this is the path I'm going on. Despite what everyone else is doing, you have to be stand on that foundation, right. And know that he has given you that calling and that he may ask you to do something totally different, but that's okay. Um, at church, we're going through a series. It's about like, um, it's about like, if you're, I think it says it in there. I don't remember Galatians, I guess, where it talks about, um, you know, when you are, or no, it's Timothy, I think. Anyway, where he's talking about if you're in a commanding officer, like you or you're you're a, in the army, right? In, in the military, you all you care about is pleasing your commanding officer. You don't care. You don't get wrapped up in civilian life. And mm-hmm. it is a second Timothy. And he's like, you just care about doing the thing that God has given you to do. And I thought about that the other day again. And I was like, yes, like I have to, I have to remind myself over and over. Cause I think it's the world. It's our sin nature. It's the enemy wanting to be like, you don't need God. Like you just need money and you need power and you need to work harder and all of those things. And so really just continuing to remind yourself that it is, you're doing whatever God asks you to do and being okay. Mm. If with whatever amount of money comes in or whatever amount of influence, just that's what God wants you to do. Um, easier said than done, but just continuing to pray and just looking at those verses over and over again and holding them as truth. Did anyone from like outside influences not understand the choice you were making? Everyone, (laughs) everyone did not understand what I was doing. Um, especially, well, I mean, it was very hard to talk to my peer, my colleagues as I was at at work, Mm -hmm. I told them what I was doing. And I felt when I was trying to convince them, because I was definitely a people pleaser then, which has been a whole other thing. um, I needed them to approve the choice somehow, like verbally or something. Oh, wow. Inside of me, you know? And Mm -hmm. so I remember the way I convinced them that it made sense was the money that I could make. Look how much money I've made when I've only put in this many hours of um, a week or whatever. 
And so it made a lot of sense to them. And that's kind of their thing with my family. Um, they did a whole lot of the, what about the career? What about the stuff you could have been doing? What about, what about all that? Um, and I was like, yeah, but I'm miserable. Like, that's not more mm. important than like, I was, I was just, I needed something different. I needed, I am a, a purpose driven kind of a person. And okay. if I didn't have a purpose, I just was like, I can't keep doing this. Um, but my mom, she had always stayed home with us. And so she was like, yeah, like she encouraged me from the beginning when I first had my son to be like, you need to figure out a way to stay home with him, no matter what it takes. And I remember fighting that so hard. So when I finally did it, (laughs) right. And so when I finally did it, she was like, yay. And actually, like I said, she was passing away, but she had left a comment that I printed out and put in a frame, but it says like, I'm so happy that you're stepping outside the box. You're going to do great or something. Mm -hmm. Like she was just so happy that I was doing something that was not like I always am such a rule follower and do what I'm supposed to do. And she was totally not. And so, um, for once I was kind of doing what I just wanted to do. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that is that what you said, I needed their approval. We don't want to say that out loud, but Mm -hmm. that is what it is, right? When we're talking to someone and we're saying, this is what I'm going to do. And they just think you're crazy. We feel like we need to explain it. Mm-hmm. Like, and uh, keep explaining until they're like, oh, that's such a good idea. Mm-hmm. When really, sometimes it, it's not going to make sense to people. Um, mm-hmm. e- even when I made the choice to come and stay home from being a school teacher to, you know, staying home and teaching private lessons out of my home, I did the same thing you did. I'm like, I work half the time and I make more money. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was kind of one way I could, you know, justify for, for people. Um, and that did help, you know, some people thought that my husband was being like a, my husband was called like a, a misogynist because is that the right word? Uh, because I stayed home and they felt like he was like making making me, yeah, yeah, making me stay home. And I was like, did you tell them that I made the choice? Did you tell them that one time I told you we couldn't get married if you were going to make me stay home and we did get married and then I made the choice uh, or that I make more when I stay home. But then recently I made the choice to even stop the private lessons. And, you know, now when you ask what I do, I'm a a full time mom, part time podcaster and speaker. And that was a big step of faith for me because Mm -hmm. I no longer had the money attached to my time, you know, and I, I, I still like have something that's going on, but I no longer had that like, okay, this is how much money I can expect Mm -hmm. to contribute to the family. And it's not like we needed it. In fact, that's why I stopped is because we needed my service as mother and wife more than we needed that paycheck. But Mm -hmm it was a hard thing to let go of. And one of my friends said to me, Courtney, I think that you're the reason why this is such a hard choice for you is because part of your identity is tied up in your work. And I was like, Ooh, (laughs) yeah. Like yikes. Number one, that's really hard to hear. And how dare you know me that well, (laughs) but it's for, it's so many of us that like, I feel like it's not, that's a thing that we, when we say it, it sounds like, oh my gosh, I'm such a terrible person or how could I, or something like you can go through all those feelings, but it's, as you're talking, I'm thinking it's so cultural. Now there are obviously subsets in the United States where people don't do that. And they are totally like, why would you go to work? Like, I know people like that too. They're like, you're not at home with your kids. Like, but that's to me far yeah, that's, between yeah. and maybe it's just because of the circle that I was in where it's like, it is like you said, people are like, why are you staying at home? Like why Mm -hmm. you can make more money and it's all wrapped into money. And it's where we, as a society, just put our identity in our work and our value. This is like, we're contributing by how much money we can bring in. And I'm not sure there's a whole bunch of reasons for that, but I also think there's part of the guilt that comes in where it's like, you live in the United States. Women can work. Women can do like it's, and it's like, what well, you can how do can whatever just, you want and you're choosing to yeah. stay home. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But you can also, you can also be come at you from like, and I had all these, all these different emotions at different times where I was like, am I somehow throwing away like a freedom that I have that I'm not using, but mm. I can stay home. But it's like, 
it's just kind of backwards, you know, in other countries where they have to stay home, they wish they could go work. Right. And then it's like, I could go work and I wanted to stay home. So it's just having the freedom to choose. But yeah. that thought definitely came up where it was like, am I somehow being selfish by staying home, which is mm. kind of backwards. But the other thing I was thinking when you were talking about your identity and stuff is I did a podcast episode on this, where one time God, God like showed me about how Abraham, you know, he was Abram and then he goes around with the new name. And I was like, to go around with this new name, Abraham is not only, he has to claim it for himself. And Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean like, it means like father of many or father of many nations or something. And I was like, he had either no kids at the time, or I think it was only no kids at the time. Yeah, no. And so he's like walking around saying this to people like, Hey, I'm Abraham. Like you are basically saying to others, God has called me to this. I'm owning it. I'm claiming it. Yeah. I don't have kids, but that's not, I don't care. God said, and it's like, when we own, like you said, I'm full-time mom, Mm -hmm. then I'm part-time podcaster and speaker, that shift in your brain, like you standing on that and not sort of timidly being like, oh yeah, I just stay home with the kids. And you know, I do some podcast thing. And for the longest time I would, people would ask me what I did. I'm like, oh, you know, I just try to blog and I don't, I mean, just, you know, stuff like that, but I'm really at home. And, and I would try to like grab at things that were worthy of saying to where I just had to, to learn to like switch it and say Mm -hmm. what it was that I did, you know, and what we call ourselves, what we're owning up to is standing firm and what God is calling us. And we have to get there ourselves to believe that God has called us. And that's huge in making that decision to come home or not, or whatever, because you're not doing it for other people. You're doing it and not even for you. It's what God has called you to. That's right. Oh my gosh. I've never thought about that with, with Abraham and you know, that, that name change. I know for me, when I first started the podcast, my, people would say, what do you do? And my husband would pipe in. She's a teacher and a podcaster. And I'm like, don't tell them that. Like I, I love that. Yeah. We, have, we don't know if this is going to work yet or not, <laughs> you know, but he would just like flat out tell people. And mm-hmm. I almost like stole some of his confidence as I started mm-hmm. to tell people. But now I, be, I say that I'm a full-time mom, part-time podcaster and speaker. And I almost do that as a reminder to myself. Who am I and what's most important? I'm not mm-hmm. a full-time part podcaster, speaker, part-time mom. And I guess it should be, I'm a full-time mom and wife because that's a part of it as well. Mm-hmm. I have to remind myself of where my priority needs to be. Mm-hmm. And um, I've heard so many people say, well, when we ask like, what do you do? The first thing we say is usually our job, oh, you know, yeah. or if so, no, I'm sorry. If they say, who are you? people will respond with their job Mm -hmm. instead of I'm a wife, a mom, a follower of Jesus, a really good baker, (laughs) you know, or whatever it is. And Mm -hmm. then maybe what we do in life, but Mm -hmm. because our job, it really says so much about us and it carries so much weight in our value. It's like the first thing that comes out you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, Mm -hmm. I am a teacher. Well, Mm -hmm. I am a nurse or whatever Mm -hmm. it might be. I, can we go back to, you were talking about the business side Mm -hmm. of things and there are moms that are staying home that are trying to find that business, uh, that balance between mom and business. And I have been there and it is difficult. And sometimes it's like a stay at home mom who they need to find some like secondary income because they do need to help out their family, but they also don't want to like leave home. So you said when business is a priority, the kids are annoying and that's not the point of staying home. (laughs) You said that in our previous conversation we had. And I was like, Oh, that's me. Right. (laughs) It's like, right. Uh, I, I've got all these things to do. Why are you here? You're interrupting me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I sometimes have to like check my responses and be mm-hmm. like, what's your first role? Oh, that's right. Mom and wife, right. not podcaster and speaker. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so how do you stop this? How do you stop and change like your r- responses really to kids being an interruption when you really do you have work you have to get done? Yeah, I think, I mean, gosh, there's so many things. Um, Cause I went through this whole journey with that. Um, just kind of to expound on that a little bit or where that statement came from when I was, I remember being knowing that the way I was viewing my son as being this 
aggravation, whatever, that it was damaging the relationship for sure, especially the one Mm -hmm. I envisioned, but I just knew that it wasn't right. That the way I was thinking of him was causing me to be like short tempered with him, have no patience. Like, can you just go do something else? You know, all this. And I was like, that's not a, how I want to treat my son in general, but also not why I came home. And so I took that to God and I was like, what is the deal. And like, you know, what, what do I do with this? And I would hear people, I went to a Christian woman and I talked to her and she told me about putting my role as mom first and above above everything. And I was just like, but is that for everybody? Like, really, is that just like a universal calling for, you know, moms? Like, cause there are moms who go to work and they work. That doesn't mean they're somehow doing something they're not supposed to do. Right. And so I was just like, I just, I just didn't like receive it, I guess. I just kind of was like, no, I don't, I don't mm-hmm. understand that because this business is really important to me. Like I just kept doing that. So as I went through the journey of kind of undoing some of the business importance, you know, in my mind, the part that came up was God, I was standing there in the kitchen being frustrated again. And it was like, I was praying over it and God was just like, but if you, if your job was mom, like playing in the floor with him or going outside and looking at you know, every single leaf of grass or whatever, like everything (laughs) would not, it wouldn't be annoying. It would be your job. And I was like, oh, so then I was like, well, if I could compartmentalize. So that kind of tuned me into this idea of kind of block scheduling that I do not have just one job. I have multiple things, multiple hats that I wear and really trying to be, I call it mindfulness, but I don't know. I mean, just kind of being intentional about now I am with, you know, I'm doing um, you know, kids, like I'm with him, I'm mom. So, but when I'm mom, I'm not thinking about business. I have to like shut it out as it come, tries to come back in every five seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like trying to kick it back out. Cause I'm like, no, 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 you have your block and it's later. Right. Mm-hmm. So if I didn't give it a time and a space, then I was constantly trying to grab at all of them. Because even if I went and sat down and actually did my work, then I'm like, I'm literally like, he's in there in front of a TV or whatever it is, or, or you know, yeah. I'm ignoring him, whatever it was. But if I was with him, then I was like, oh, my business. Or then I was like, look at the house, like whatever it was, all of it was kind of everywhere. And I was like, I have to give them blocks or nothing. Like I'm always scrambling around and everything feels like it's lacking. And that's when I know people talk about balance. And for me, balance was not and I had to learn it was, it's not equal time, right? It's whatever I needed. This is another part Mm. of kind of tuning into what is God calling me to? Because for some people, maybe they are coming home and they really do have a big pull to do their business. They need to check their heart on why, but figuring out what God's asking them to do there. And for me, I mean, I've had to do like seasons of ebbing and flowing with that, um, where there are times when my, like I started homeschooling recently. So yeah, my son gets a lot of my attention. Um, and I've just had to be okay with God has asked me to do this right now, but, um, whatever God's asking you to do, then setting that up into like these, like, then we have to do our due diligence, right? If I'm going to be a mom and I'm going to be a wife and I'm going to be, have the home and I'm going to do a business, what does all that look like? And what time am I going to put into it? And then trying to stick to those, those segments so that you feel good about those things for you Mm -hmm. and and your family. Another thing that I think helped with that the block the the, like scheduling blocks of time I think is critical and I'm not great at it Mm -hmm. but when I do it I see (laughs) the benefit like I see yeah it's amazing because then you sit there and you play with your child or you go outside and you throw you know football for a while or whatever it might be and and you know that for that space of time you are giving them your attention and they feel seen or they feel heard. Um, and that, you know, means a lot to them, but also I think it then releases me when it switches to where it's like time to do work Mm -hmm. or time to clean or whatever it is, grocery shopping. I don't feel like I should be doing something else because, Mm -hmm. uh, we've already had that time. And sometimes it's easier for me if I will focus on my child first and then do the other thing, you know, because Mm -hmm. then I'm like, we have done this. And when they need more attention from me, I can actually remind them like, Hey, remember we just, uh, built this. Do you remember that thing that we built? Well, Mm -hmm. I I would like for you to kind of take some time by yourself or to play with that thing that we built while I am, um, spending the next 20 minutes, doing this. And sometimes Mm -hmm. even setting a timer Mm -hmm. helps them and me because they Mm -hmm. know that if the timer hasn't gone up off, then mom's work time is not done. Mm -hmm. Little kids, I know this wouldn't really 
work. And it doesn't mean they don't come in and say, mom, is it time yet? Mom, are you done yet? Mom, is it time yet? Mom, Look at the timer. <laughs> it's not yes, off. but go I can on. say that. Has the timer gone off? No. Mm -hmm. Then what's the answer? Okay. And they walk out and, mm -hmm. you know, but then it also holds me accountable because how many times do I sit down and say, I'll be done in 20 minutes. And then I look at the clock and it's like 40 minutes later. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no wonder y'all are bouncing off the walls. <laughs> you know, it's time yeah. for us to, to switch. But I, I love, so I love your idea of block scheduling because I think that's so important. And I also think setting realistic expectations mm -hmm. of what you gonna, are going to get accomplished. Like you said, I'm going to go home and I'm going to work eight hours a day and I'm also going to take care of my kids. And, uh, to say, I'm not going to get eight hours of work in a day. I'm just not, mm -hmm. uh, I'm probably not even going to get 20 hours of work in a week personally for me. Mm -hmm. Um, it's going to be closer to 15 hours. Mm -hmm. So if that's all I have in a, in a week, what does it look like? And what goals can I realistically set with the amount of work time that I, that I have, um, right. do you find it hard to adjust those goals or do you have any suggestions for how to figure out how to set your goals based on the amount of time that you, you have to commit? Yeah. So, well, one, I think I wanted to speak to this a little bit to say it's in relation to that, where it's like giving yourself grace. Cause this is all a training like you have to train yourself and your kids, right? So when you're trying to figure out your goals, first of all, seeing that your whole week that you might have 15, that's if it all goes perfectly well and none of those work hours yeah. get interrupted, right? And you might look at that and be like, that's not enough. Like I used to work 40 hours, you know, undo. You had to, un like, you're not doing that anymore. Right? You were trained to work 40 hours a week. That was your life then. Just right. in the same way that if you're a stay-at-home mom now and you thought of going to work and being away from the home 40 hours a week, it's like, where's all my time for all the things that I need to do at home, you know, and you're, whatever yeah. you're doing, you have to give yourself this grace period to train both yourself and your kids and figure out what that looks like. So when I try to put in my goals over the week, um, and I actually have a course on this, it's called goal setting for Christian entrepreneurs, where I talk about how to sit with God and figure out what to prioritize for your business mm. and things. And then like I said, like you said, look at your schedule and figure out what time blocks you have and then looking at your kind of big picture goals for what you're wanting to do and grabbing little ones, little, little steps. Now I'm totally that driven part of me, that overachiever part of me wants so many, too many goals, too many things, too many big yeah. projects. Right. So one strategy that I've heard of people doing, and I, it does work is to have like an ABC, right? So it's like, these are the things that I have to get done in these time slots. And then like, let's say you just blow through the you know, the A task, let's say there's five of them or something, then you can start tapping into your other ones. That way you don't overload yourself, mm. but you're basically like, when you first try it, you're probably going to get it wrong. Like when you first do this whole, you're going to sit down and do the schedule and you have this week and you go to do it, it's not going to go perfectly. I mean, don't go into it saying it's not going to work, but just sort of looking for what got in the way? What was the issue? This took me twice as long. Why is it? Cause it really takes twice as long or did I get distracted or, you know, whatever, mm. or, you know, I thought my kids could sit still and do something on their own for two hours. Clearly not. Let's adjust that. I need to bring it down to like smaller chunks. If you can do that, you please know. let us, let us know how you do that. Let us know how you train right. your kids to do something. <laughs> right. Like hours. whatever it takes. And maybe it's asking for other people. So like there are times when I will, and this comes and starts dancing around the role as wife, right? It's admittedly easy for me to sort of be like, oh, my husband's home. Great. You take our son and you could do something yeah. and I'm going to work. But then I'm like, now I'm creeping into family time. Right. So not always grabbing help, but also not being afraid to ask for help. So we kind of talked about it and it's like, okay, you know, one night a week, I'm going to work for two or three hours at a time, like solid. And you're going to take him fishing. Awesome. Dad, son time, mom work time. And like, we set that up so that he knows it's coming. I know it's coming. I have no guilt, spending time with dad, you know, all of that kind That's of right. stuff. And for a while I used to feel guilt if I asked him to take him to the park, because I thought everything was about me as mom, that if I wasn't doing it, and this took a while for me to be like, no, he needs time with his son. Yes, that's good. Good for them to spend time together. Uh, you know, just yeah. having to come to all this conclusion. So, And I'm, I'm telling you, we are talking about this. And this is something that I have 
severely struggled with you. If my husband was sitting here, he'd be like, amen and amen and hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, this whole like life work balance, I am an achiever in life. And uh, I mean, my mom used to come in and be like, Courtney, the school project is done. And I'm like, but it's not like quite colored enough over here. And she's like, you already have the A. You don't need the A plus. You, you just don't. <laughs> I'm like, like, yes, you do. Yeah, right, right. I'm like, but I do. I have to get 110%. She's like, it's not even possible. So just stop. You know, like that has always been my drive. Um, but I find now that I have to find that balance. And that has been a real struggle for me in staying home. Um, mm-hmm. And that idea of balance and that idea of, you know, kind of like uh, where, where do I find my value? Where do I find um, purpose? What is my purpose here? And in this time in life, I have been encouraged by other like really successful. So I'm going to take myself podcast speaker, writer. I'm, I haven't written any published anything, but, uh, one day I will. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) someone just claimed that title right there. Uh, and, but I look at these other people that are podcast speakers and writers and I'm like, Oh my gosh, they do so much. And I heard an interview with one of them and she was like, um, I look back at pictures of myself with my, my four babies. And she's like, I never could have done what I'm doing now when I had babies. She's like, my four are all in high school now or going like, like in eighth grade going into high school. She was mm-hmm. there super independent. They probably mm-hmm. don't want me around anyway, even though I am. Right. You know, and she's like, but, but when they were little, little, they needed me more and I could not have done what I'm doing now. And Mm -hmm. that is an encouragement to me as an achiever to be like, it's a long game, you know, Mm -hmm. motherhood and, uh, working as a mom, whether you, you know, work outside of the home or you work in the home, it's a long game for Mm -hmm. us because we've got little kids who need us. And that may mean that we can't take the promotion because of the amount of hours it's going to require, uh, from us, or, Mm -hmm. you know, we, we are going to have to look at that goal and say, I, I can achieve that. I can achieve that in six weeks, Mm -hmm. but no one will see me for six weeks. It's going to literally take all of my time. So in order to accomplish that, I need a live in cook, a live in maid, (laughs) a live-in babysitter. Mm -hmm. And what is my focus here? Mm -hmm. Uh, And I was so encouraged and challenged by that of like, where are your little ones at? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, does, do you have a child who needs more care or more help? Where is your focus at? And, and my dad always, or my dad, my husband always says, you moms have it really hard. (laughs) I'm like, That's good. <laughs> well, thank you for understanding that. <laughs> yeah. But he, what he is talking about is, you know, while he is a very involved dad, he's like, your job is, is to help our boys succeed. He's like, well, I go out and build my business. He, he's an entrepreneur as well. Well, I build mm-hmm. my business and make sure that I am providing for the family. And he's like, but sometimes that means that you as moms, your goals take two or three times longer than you want them to be because Mm -hmm. of where your focus is. Um, One Mm -hmm. of the things that I think a lot of moms will get kind of drawn into um, is the mindset uh, realm of things. Like, Mm -hmm. well, we just need to talk about your mindset and we need to talk about, um, you know, how to make it uh, you know, how to, how to dream and how to visualize these things that you want to have happen. And I know that that's like a, that's, it's a very broad term, right? Mindset. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. and for you, you kind of went into that direction instead of really thinking like, uh, I need to kind of more identify myself with what Christ wants me to be. So what did you discover as you kind of went down this path? as a mom, as someone who's staying home, kind of looking for her purpose in life. Mm -hmm. And you thought, Hey, those people are all like doing their mindset coaching and stuff. And they look successful. I'm going to try that. What did you discover? Yeah. 
So like I said, I was not in church at all at that time. But what I was, as I went down that path, I realized like they're talking, it basically ended up me in new age world and like manifestation and law of attraction stuff. And I was like, what, it, like, what is this? Like, this is, everybody's talking about this. And when I went down that path though, I was like, they keep saying like universe. I was like, isn't that just God? I'll just plug God in. It'll be fine. And so I just kept listening and thinking about it. And then one time somebody I was listening to said something about crystals. And I was like, okay, now I know this is now I know it's crazy. And so then I, I literally just all of a sudden, after all these years, I sat down and I was like, what does God say about this? And I opened my, I defined my Bible, opened the Bible. I think I had gotten one at a wedding or something, I had to under the wrapper. And like, I opened this Bible and I was like, started at like, just felt so strongly called back to God. And it was like, what does he say? And what does the Bible say? Cause like mm. that was in me. I mean, you know, and I grown up, I grew, I grew up, I grew up in the Bible, like I said. So like, I just knew that wasn't okay. And just, I guess the Holy spirit working in me too. Um, and when I did that, it, I got called to a specific church that I don't even, I didn't even know anybody at, but I was like, I'm going to this church. And so I went to this church and I went down that path and that's where I started. It's almost like in the effort to understand the mindset, it became like renewing your mind and the mindset of a Christian, like understanding that my identity is in Christ and really taking all of those pieces that the entrepreneur space takes. I'm saying that generally, but like they take it and they make it so it's all about you and all about what you want, making yourself feel amazing and all of that. And I basically took all of those things and looked for those answers in scripture and looked to see like, what does, what does God say about my abilities? Or mm -hmm. does he, does he bless us with money and things? Like, is the, I always grew up thinking that was terribly, terribly wrong and I'm still out, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a kind of a gray area on there, right? Depends on your heart and all those things, but don't reject what God's trying to give you. He blesses people over and over through scripture in scripture with, with material things and with lots of wealth, but you, but he doesn't want to harm you. So he doesn't want you to do it when you're completely greedy or it's going to ruin your marriage or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's like learning all of these things really took me in a place where I had to constantly, like, I just had to learn to constantly check my thoughts and really an understanding that there is a spiritual battle going on. And it's not just this, like the kids putting on the armor of God, like, no, that's not written to kids. I mean, yes, but no, it's written to us. And like, yeah. we, I think of that as like a Sunday school thing, but I was like, no, in Ephesians six, it talks about this, this armor of God, because we have an enemy who wants us to fail. And as you look at scripture and you look at the the temptations that Jesus faced in the wilderness with Satan. It's like, he's coming after him for, you know, um, proving his identity, wanting, um, you know, respect and authority and wanting riches, like all of these things. And it's like, you don't have to, that's going to happen to us. If it happened to him, it's going to happen to us. And so just recognizing that when these thoughts came flooding in, they might not be true. And what does scripture say? So I could hold it up you know, the two of them together and be like, no, I know that's not true. I have a whole window here. I'm like sticky notes because I will put whatever thing when I read it and it stands out to me. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need that. Like this one. It's like, there is profit in all hard work, but endless talk leads only to poverty. I'm like, stop talking about it and do it. You know, like mm -hmm. I have, I hold these things here and like trusting in, in God with all my heart, not on my own understanding. When I don't understand what I'm doing, where's the path? Where's the clear road? I may not understand it, but I know it's the right way to go. You know, just holding on to those things, because if not, our mindset, which is just the way we view things, the way we see things, the way we think about things. If we're thinking that we can't do it or not, we can't do it. If we are like worthless, like who's going to listen to me? Who should I be the one? Who should I have to be doing this? Um, you know, I don't, I'm not going to charge for anything. Like all of those thoughts. It's like, what does scripture say? And if that doesn't align, that's not the thought you need to be having. You have to hold on to the, to the, the biblical truth and knowing yeah. that God is in you and will empower you to do what he's given you to do. He always does. And it doesn't mean that you're going to be like, I'm ready to do this. I can do this. None of that. Um, you know, yeah. not necessarily, it might be totally stepping out in faith. Like, I don't know where you're taking me, but I'm going. What are some specific things as you kind of like, you know, explored the mindset space, um, which like we're saying, it depends on, on who you talk to as far as like what, um, you know, like a mindset, I'm a mindset coach or, mm -hmm. you know, like that type of thing, what that might look like. But what are some things that you saw in the mindset space that, um, that you were like, okay, I see what you're trying to do there, but this is actually what God calls us to do. Well, I think one of the biggest ones in the 
well, it was, I guess it's mindset space, but it was kind of like in believing in yourself and your own abilities and basically having like whatever you wanted, like manifestation, kind of visualizing, okay. you know, the car you want and the home you want and the money you want. And then it'll just kind of happen. Yeah. And I've I'm heard that like, recently. Like I manifested that I manifested that. Right. And but yeah. like, then I saw people it happening to them. So I was like, this is me. And it, it sounds good. Like, awesome. Yeah. I want $10,000 or whatever, you know, but then I was like, what, what I realized is that it just takes God out of it. Yeah. You might be able to get $10,000, but is that right for you? Is that meant for you? God, you can totally choose to do whatever you want. You don't, God's not going to twist your arm and make you do anything, but you, um, have a choice to either like he, he loves us. So he gives us a choice. So we, and at one time it was like this visualization God showed me It's probably not novel. Right. But it's just, it's just what stuck with me. It was like a map of like the beginning to the end of my life. And it was like, I could totally choose whatever I want, except I have no, it's like a video game where you don't know what's next, like a map. Like, I don't know which way to go. I don't know where it's going. I know nothing. I can meander along and figure something out. I might happen to land on some good parts, but probably not. And so, um, so then I was like, but if God who can see every, he knows the perfect path, he knows this whole thing. And he's trying to get me to do all these amazing things. It's like, I can choose. And so I just, when I was hearing that, I was like, whatever thoughts, like, yes, I can take what I want and take it to God and say, here's what I want. Is that what you want for me? Why, why not? Like, what's my heart behind that? All of those things. So it's, um, so I think that's a big one is taking the the focus off of you and uh, I want to be careful about that because I feel like people get into like, you don't matter. And it's not that because if God loves us, I mean, that's why he's done everything he's done is so that we can be with him. So it's not that we don't matter, but meaning it's not about just what you want in your own bubble. Like, yeah, I want a boat and I want this and I want that. And I want to just, I don't know, like whatever it is you just want without thinking about what does God want? What is he calling me to do? What is right for me in this time? Trusting in his provision and his timing and his plan, all of those things that even though I might want to do that, he's actually asking me to go this way for now and being like, okay, it might not be what I want, but ultimately I want to, to do what he's asking. Like Jesus, you know, he said, if you can take this cup, then take it from me. But if it needs to be what you have me to do, I'll do it. Right. And it's like your love for God trumps what you really want. And so I think that's probably the biggest one Mm. uh, for sure. And I mean, I I agree with you there. I think you can, you know, bring God what you want and he's going to, he's going to send you on your path. You know, you're going to take your path, but God's path is better than our own. God's timing is better than our own. And sometimes he will give us a, a vision or a passion for something and say like, look, I want you to desire this, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of like the, um, the Israelites desired the promised land because it was promised to them. Like that's what he told them. But I bet the way that they got there is not the way that they would have chosen to get there. Mm -hmm. Right. But if they had gotten there really fast, maybe they wouldn't, or not, maybe they wouldn't have been ready for what they had to do once they got there. Mm -hmm. And uh, God took the time to get them there and everything that happened to them prepared them for, you know, the fulfillment in its fullness of God's promise. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think sometimes you're right. We, We see these things and God's, you know, just because he doesn't make it happen right away doesn't mean that he won't make it happen. Um, Mm -hmm. And sometimes our heart changes, you know, Mm -hmm. like, I still think a 1957 Chevy pickup is one of the most amazing trucks on the face of the planet. There was a time when I really, really wanted one. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, yeah, old trucks break down a lot. Right. And I have like, you know, a lot of people to keep alive in this house Mm -hmm. and I don't need a truck that I also need to keep alive. Mm -hmm. So, you know, God sees that, but maybe one day he will see it, you know, possible for me to maybe I can have one later on I don't know but like some of those desires either our desire is going to change or God's like I'm going to get you there but maybe it's not time yet maybe you're not the right person at that time and that's why Mm -hmm. that's like I said earlier about being content with where I'm at with having young kids that's Mm -hmm. a hard thing for me to swallow and I it's a hard thing for me to like you know, a mindset basically for me to keep, you know, focused on the fact that the Lord has blessed me with these young kids Mm -hmm. and that 
traveling the world as a speaker would not actually be great right now. Mm -hmm. It would get in the way of me being a mom. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean that I don't get to speak some weekends and, and enjoy that. Yes, it mm -hmm. does. But you know, what, when is God going to, you know, kind of expand those boundaries? I don't know. And mm -hmm. when he does, I'll be ready because I'll know it's his timing and not mine. <laughs> you know? Right. Well, and it's all a heart thing. Like God says, you know, he says there was a faster way for them to go, but he didn't take them that way That's because right. they would have, they would have encountered war and they would have turned back and he's like, nope. So he takes them to the wilderness and even, you know, the ones that make it, he's like, now they're scared. So they got to kill all those people, <laughs> but like they have to get rid of that generation because of their heart, because yeah. God needed their heart to be in the right place. And so mm -hmm. I keep thinking about that for each of us. Like we all may be, you know, whatever the desires of your heart, that can be one in the same with what God wants you to have. He put the desires there, but it's only when we're following him and leaning into him and seeking him, that that is true. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we don't have the thing that we desire on our heart. We have to just getting to a place where we're okay. Like you said, with the timing of it, with, um, leaning, like wondering why, why do we really want this thing? Is it really something that God has put on our heart? All of that, because God wants your heart to be in the right place so that he can bless you. And he told the Israelites that That's in right. Deuteronomy eight, he's like, don't forget, you're going to like, don't forget that I'm the one who brought you through. And when you start when you remember that he will continue to bless the work of your hands and all that. It's when you start to think that you did it all on your own and you totally forget God that he's like, no, like that's Hello. not where we're going to be the <laughs> happiest or blessed and be able to do these great things. So yeah. it's a journey because just because we got to this point, as it shows in the Bible over and over, right. They made it to the promised land and they just kept messing up over and over and over again. And to me, I'll read it and I'm like, what is wrong with them? Well, A, they didn't have the Holy Spirit like we do, but B, they, if they did it, why would we not? I mean, yeah. like, it's just showing what our, like our human nature is. That's we right. will continue to fall away and go back if we're not careful and paying attention and letting God work on our heart in whatever way he needs to, and whatever our journey looks like. That's right. Uh, I want to know from you, what is your number one tip uh, to someone who is like making a decision, whether it be, um, go, I'm a stay at home mom and I'm thinking about going back to the workplace mm -hmm. or I am, uh, you know, I work right now outside of the home and I'm thinking about, you know, staying home and being a work at home mom or a stay at home mom, whatever that might look like. What's your number one suggestion? I think I would have, even though it's probably not a fun answer, I would have to say it's, really just praying and getting with God on like checking your heart on that. And that's probably a very like a loaded answer because there's a whole lot to it, but really whatever you're going to do praying and getting clear on the answer, meaning you probably know what you really want to do. And that's the piece you want to hold on to right behind. It's going to come fear and doubt. Like, that's not what we're talking about. Like mm. that's going to come. Right. But it's the piece of, I think this is what I'm supposed to do. Like I, I feel led to do that thing. And then being willing to hold on to what God has given you. And then he promised that to you. And then he's asking you to do it, even though you feel fear and doubt and all of those things. Um, yeah. behind it. So that's like the first step is doing that and then acting on it, right? Like then actually taking steps of like steps to show that you truly have faith in what God has given you. Otherwise it's just, like I said, just sitting around talking about it and thinking about it, but not doing anything. That's not really saying that you believe what God has asked you to do. Mm -hmm. Cause then you want to see that you like want to see the path first before you take a step. And it's like, that's not how faith works. I remember saying that one time I was like, well, if I knew it was going to work, then I would do it. And I was like, yeah. oh, <laughs> That's right. Not yeah. having faith. But like, then we don't have faith. Yeah, exactly. Then it's all about us and not about God. Right. Right. Yeah. And my my tip is that, um, you know, is to find people on both sides of the aisle and seek their counsel. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was trying to make my decision, I actually went with uh, two friends, one who is a stay at home mom and actually came out of, uh, you know, working um, in the public sector and then came to be a stay at home mom. And then a friend of mine who had been a stay at home mom and had recently now stepped back into, uh, you know, working outside of the home. And I asked them to go to dinner with me and I said, here's my thoughts and here's what I'm doing. And I'm struggling with this, you know, should I, you know, make this decision? And they had a lot of wisdom for me. And I loved it because surprisingly, surprisingly, it was the same advice. Even though one oh, was fun. leaving, 
you know, working yeah. outside of the home to come into the house. And the other one was doing the opposite. It was the same advice. And so finding those people that are in different areas to, uh, that, you know, are biblically sound and, you know, are listening to, to God in their own life. Um, and that are going to give you good, godly, wisely, wise counsel. I think, mm-hmm. Um, finding those disciplers in your life in that moment is really important to, you know, help you make that decision and feel confident in it. Obviously your husband is a good person to also get in on the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hopefully he's already way in on the conversation, right. but I do, I do think that, that if, if a wife has the desire to stay at home, that is a serious conversation that I think the husband and wife need to have. Mm-hmm. Um, because it does take a lot of support from your, your spouse on, yeah. on either side. Um, not just financially, but also, you know, you're with those kids all day mm-hmm. and, um, you're going to need a break. And so what does that look like and how does that affect your relationship, um, positively or negatively or whatever? So, um, well, you mentioned that uh, your podcast and you mentioned that you have a course. Where can we find your podcast and where can we find your website and all that information? Uh, MamaWithACalling.com. And you can find the podcast link on there or look at Mama with a Calling for the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Yes, absolutely. So we have one final question that we ask all of our guests, and that's because we are not meant to live alone or and we're meant to live in community. Uh, who is it that has helped you along in your journey? Gosh, I think community has been so important for this particular journey of transitioning to home. There's one friend in particular um, that I actually met online because I had heard somebody say that you need to find these women who can support you through through doing this. And I just like saw her online and we had a lot of things in common, like the same kind of business, the same kind of interest and from the South and Christians. And so I like reached out to her. And we became these friends, like since 2018, we've just been friends virtually and we talk all the time. And through that community of talking to her through the times that I've been down and up and all over, I don't think I would even, I don't even know if I would have continued, you know? So just to be able to have that support, she, that's been huge. But I think community is a big one because you can feel isolated and alone Mm -hmm. um, otherwise doing something like this. So finding someone else who is doing something similar can really, really help. They can just understand what you're going through. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. It's so important. So, well, Alexia, thank you so much for sharing with us your experience. And and my hope is that mm-hmm. other moms that are listening will be encouraged to, you know, look at that desire that they have in their heart, uh, if that's there and, and kind of begin that prayer, whatever direction it is and whatever that looks like. Um, and begin that conversation with their spouse and, and seek counsel from friends and, and say, you know, Lord, what, what direction do you have for our life? And not, I love what you said. You said, you know, pay attention to that desire that's in your heart, but shortly after that will come the the fear mm-hmm. and, and we have to recognize that for what it is. And so thank you for that wisdom that you shared. And, and we're so happy that you came to join us today. Thank you for having me. It was a, it was a joy.